Uh, the 12th annual Desmond Tutu International uh, Peace Lecture uh, will be taking place tomorrow in Cape Town. It will be the first lecture uh, since uh, Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu's passing at the end of last year. The event is being held on Archbishop Tutu's birthday and will honor his extraordinary life uh, while reflecting on his legacy into the future. Speakers will include uh, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Ms. Amina J. Mohammed, and best-selling author Doug Abrams. Uh, for more on this, let's uh, speak to uh, the CEO for the Desmond and Leah Dudu uh, legacy. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. Um, a very warm welcome uh, to you then, Janet. Thanks so much for having me, Flo. It's lovely to speak to you and the viewers. All right. Well, it is the first lecture, sadly, after the passing of the Archbishop. Talk to us about uh, the significance and really uh, what we can look forward to. And I will assume that there will be quite a bit of reflection um, on his life now that, you know, he has passed on. Yeah, we really wanted to make this an extremely meaningful event as the first one since the Arches passing. Um, you know, the, the International Peace Lecture has been taking place every year on his birthday for the past 11, 12 years now. Um, but this year, we really, really wanted to think about what is the legacy he would want us to focus on moving into the future. And we thought particularly in times like this, where it seems like there's crises on all fronts all over the world, uh, that one of the things he would want us to focus on is hope. Uh, his, you know, his drive and his activism was so rooted in a powerful vision for the future, a powerful vision that we could overcome apartheid, that um, that we could change climate change, that we could tackle injustice wherever we found it. Mm. And so the theme for this year's lecture is a vision for hope and healing in times of crisis. Yeah. Um, and we're really hoping to honor the arch and bring, bring that legacy to the fore, that um, powerful moral courage that he had. And I mean, uh, one can really say that we are indeed in times of uh, crisis. I mean, there's a lot of dynamics at play um, in South Africa currently, I mean, politically and socially and so forth. I mean, we're dealing with the issue of uh, load shedding, for example, water shortages. And I know, uh, you know, the, the, the yeah. Arch certainly had a great sort of sense of humor when it came to uh, some of our challenges. And Ron wonders how he would have reflected on, uh, you know, on the goings on. Uh, but let's talk to that. I mean, what we can expect from uh, those who will be speaking and uh, reflecting on, you know, mm. how how indeed the arch would have perceived some of what's going on in the country. Yeah, well, I can be certain that uh, he would he would throw a few jabs in speaking truth to power yeah. while making a few jokes. Um, our two speakers are, are really trying to come at the, the issue of a vision for hope and healing from two different angles. Um, Amina Mohammed is an extraordinary African leader. She's, you know, had a leadership role in, in education and healthcare in Nigeria. She was the Minister of the Environment, really setting a climate change agenda. And she's one of the main architects of the Sustainable Development Goals. And really, um, we felt she resonated so powerfully with the Arch because of this notion of putting human flourishing at the center of the ideals of global development. And, and we really are looking forward to hearing how she brings that to life for us tomorrow evening. Yeah. And then Doug Abrams has been a collaborator with the Arch for about 20 years. Um, he most famously wrote uh, the Book of Joy with the Arch and the Dalai Lama, um, but has, has written children's books with the Arch and has been accompanying him and writing with him for many, many years. And so we're really hoping Doug will bring some of those memories of the Arch to life um, and share his own wisdom and insight from working with the Arch for so long. So, you know, m merging the global perspective with a, a really deeply personal perspective, we really hope will do honor and justice to the legacy of the Arch. You know, the Arch uh, liked to talk to the people, to the people on uh, the ground, and uh, perhaps I'm being subjective here, but I, I find a lot of uh, these lectures tend to be sort of elitist, and they're not necessarily then speaking to the people mm. uh, who are on the ground. I mean, if, if one is, and, and maybe I will criticize you, if one is to look at uh, the guest list and, and those who are speaking, it does kind of look to be um, a certain uh, level of people who, who must then be taking the message in. But certainly this is not what uh, the arch was was about is this is this something that you you, you sort of pay attention to when you when you're looking at um you know putting lectures forward and putting together guest lists mm. 
Yeah, absolutely, Flo, and, and thank you for picking up on it. I mean, we've been very deliberate to ensure that um, we have a really diverse audience uh, tomorrow evening. We've, we've got um, a range of NGO partners that are that are all collaborating with us to make sure the audience in the room is diverse. Mm. But also then we've tried to bring in the voices of young people um, in a range of ways into the lecture itself. So we have a children's art exhibition uh, that's up at City Hall um, for the duration of the lecture, and, and that's really drawing on... Um, um, children from across the city of Cape Town, across the country. Um, and we've also got the voices of young people coming through in some sort of various um, uh, video formats. We've got the South African Youth Choir. So really trying to break out of the idea of an ivory tower lecture and really almost saying, how can we create a festival of hope together? Yeah. Um, how can we really create opportunities for this to be more than just um, a few people sitting in the room listening to a, a lovely talk, but a space to imagine and create together? And, and we really hope uh, that the arch would have been pleased with the efforts we've made to make sure that the event does reflect that ethos that he had. All right, uh, Janet Jobson, thanks very much for giving us uh, your time and certainly good luck uh, for that. That is uh, Janet Jobson, who is the CEO for the Desmond and Leah Dudu Legacy Foundation. Of course, the 12th annual uh, Desmond Dudu International Peace Lecture will be taking place tomorrow then in uh, Cape Town.